they're I, trying to please everybody and then they end up pleasing nobody in the end. Oh, that's a great line. Robo 6. Going dark. About to experience the first ever Going Dark podcast. My name is T-Dog. You probably know that because the video is uploaded on my channel. But myself and my friend here, which I'll introduce in a second, we've been dying to do some sort of Call of Duty podcast for the more, I would say, casual crowd. There's a lot of competitive podcasts out there, but we were talking and we're like, let's let's just talk about all things Call of Duty. So you may know this guy. His name is Chopper. He's got a wonderful YouTube channel. It'll all be linked below, but this is going to be the co-host, so I will let him introduce himself and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys ha have been familiar with, with me, but I feel like me and T-Dog make very similar content, and we just got to talking one day, and we're like, we have a lot to say about, like, I think the more broad state of the game with Call of Duty. Like, there are a lot of podcasts that talk specifically about, like, the competitive scene and everything, but... Um, I don't think there's a really a lot of podcasts that are just talking about more broad scope, what's going on in the community and the scene specifically. And we had really good discussions and we wanted to do that ourselves. Yes, I I hit him up. So we do Star Wars stuff together. It's a quick plug for y'all. The Galactic Scoop channel. We're doing a Star Wars podcast and we're like, dude, we end up talking about COD prior to our Star Wars podcast for like 30 minutes and we're like why don't we just do the same thing and record it and he was like yeah let's do it so we decided what better way to start this podcast off with the season three news that have just been released it feels like dare i say we have some positivity some positive news to talk about it feels like in my opinion are we are we healing just a little bit you know just a little bit I think the thing with like season three and maybe this will greatly depend on wh where you're looking at it from. But I actually think that as far as live service goes on the whole, I think Sledgehammer have actually done a really good job with it um, compared to maybe games that we've had prior where um, it feels like they very much taper off the content that they're, they're giving to yeah. see the game through to its end. Yeah. Um, it feels like every single season, with a caveat, they're adding um, things that are like genuinely, oh, I'm going to go back and check this out. Things that feel fresh and new enough to warrant uh, returning to the game, even if just for a short period of time. But yeah. I have to give it to Sledgehammer. I think they've actually been doing probably maybe the best with life service. I, with, again, with a huge caveat, but we'll get to that later. But I... I, I, I I think it's been good. I, I love Sledgehammer. I, I feel like they have always gotten the 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 scraps, I guess is what. I, I feel like they've always... So with Advanced Warfare, they tried to kind of do their own thing. They tried to make this crazy jump, which I totally respected. I love that game. Roast me in the comments all you want. Yes, there should have not been variants of the bow and the ASM-1, but the competitive scene, the maps, the overall feeling of changing the game, it just felt fresh and unique. And in my tier list, I think I have like a B plus. So it is what it is. But anyway, I feel like they were always trying to innovate a little bit. And now in the last two years, they've kind of just been handed these projects like, hey, do this uh, with Vanguard. Like, you got to stick to this. And then with MW3, like, you got to do this. And I feel like th with this update here, it's like, man, just imagine if they had the freedom to do whatever they wanted again. I just, I get fired up because I know... There's probably something that's holding them back, and it's it's I, I'm I'm gonna hold my we'll, tongue. We'll, yeah, we'll 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 maybe yeah, get to that. Sorry, but it's like sorry. I think <laughs> I think Sledgehammer is like, in my opinion, they are easily the most um, proactive with the community. Yeah, like among the studios, like you know, I I love Treyarch and Infinity Ward um, for their own reasons, but Sledgehammer is undeniably the one that's the most like community involved you see them you know speaking up on twitter more they they are a lot more invested in like what the community is saying and mm -hmm. they they really listen to and i think like when you and i played modern warfare um before release like you could very much tell that they were like dialed in and in tune with what people were saying <laughs> yeah. from last year's game for sure. i mean like practically the whole multiplayer is a response to yes mw2 um so for what that's worth they very much do listen to the community now 
we also say the word community as if it's one umbrella, mm -hmm. but that's not always true because like this kind of leads me into what I was going to say is while I am praising Sledgehammer for what they've done uh, with like Warzone and, and multiplayer stuff for the season um, for zombie fans. I mean, un unfortunately we had a very strong season one, but everything else uh. has been, um, <laughs> I'm looking at the, 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 the roadmap. I don't think I see zombies mentioned on here. Oh, oh I do. I do. I it's just one little block over here. But got, if you let me get let me zoom in on times a hundred. So zoom here. in on that a little bit and look <laughs> at what it says at the bottom, bro. Uh, it's gonna be even more criminal. Yeah, it says in season. That means oh, that stuff is not no. even launching with season three. Oh no. So so that as as a as a zombies enjoyer, we had a great season one. We're like, yo, if this is the, like if this is the direction of the game, that's exciting. And then we're like, okay, great. And then season one reload comes. Ah, oh, not not quite as good. Season two. <laughs> Same thing as this. No zombies content when it launches. Like, imagine a whole pillar of the game getting no updates when a new big, like, update uh, happens. So everything will be in Season 3 reloaded. And even then, it's not the biggest update in the world. Like, MP fans are absolutely feasting. Yeah. Um, but it feels like for zombie fans, like, we are being, like, we're getting not even the bare minimum. Um, And that's kind of rough. Like, <laughs> so. But, so I have two I have two things I want to say. Number one, sure. I, for you, for the people watching, I would say you're zombies number one. Am I may I say that? Yeah. So like yeah. from when you have a zombies perspective and we're talking zombies, this is the guy you want to listen to. I will be more from a casual perspective of like, you know, I see that and I went, okay, cool, go for them. They got that. Like, but yeah, I didn't even notice the in season. And it and to me, it feels like with the zombies. It's almost like what modern the multiplayer has dealt with. I just think the zombie you guys haven't eaten in a while, correct? Like is Cold War the last time you guys have been well, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold Cold War was like pretty pretty good, I would say. And then Vanguard was, you know, won't even get into I that. I don't even and know then, the zombies map on Vanguard. Um, well, that's a whole other discussion, okay. <laughs> but they launched with a map that was like it wasn't even done. It wasn't even oh. an alpha. Like it was so unfinished. Okay. But but anyways, like that never really got any better. With MW3, it's different because they actually had a really good launch, unlike Vanguard. Like Vanguard was yeah. dead on, on launch no matter yeah. what. MW3 zombies had a really good launch and a and actually a very good season one. And we thought that would be the precedent for what was coming forward. But what it feels like is they they kind of like put everything good up front. Like all the stuff on launch in season one was just right there and then like everything else behind the curtain is like again not even the bare minimum they're i mean they're advertising like a cutscene, dude like a cutscene <laughs> in a zombies map is like a given that that shouldn't be on the roadmap that should just be assumed and then the schematics are not like we're, we're getting a a golden gas mask schematic um an ammo mod that puts dead wire on launchers and then an uh a schematic that makes mercs not shoot you that's it yeah like I mean, and I, then a new warlord. Bro, I like. I feel like I'm looking at that, and it really reminds me of. I I don't even want to say the last couple of years. I want to say at least the last year from the multiplayer side of things. I feel like interesting MW2. You would get the roadmap for MW2, and actually, I believe Charlie Intel tweeted this: the roadmap from this season three versus the season three of MW2, and it is. It is empty over there um, on the really? MW2 side. Why, why yeah. do you think that is for uh, multiplayer on I, MW2? I think that they've maybe realized that, and maybe they'll have to realize this with zombies. I feel like there's still a core amount of people that play. They get on, they play multiplayer, they get off, they play search. I mean, you see the there's plenty of YouTubers that hop on and they do multiplayer content, and it still does well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they just realize maybe. People do miss that hardcore multiplayer experience. I know it's dying. I know everybody says it's dying. I love to hop on and play. From a casual standpoint, I've become more of a casual gamer in the last couple of years, I feel like, with creating content, like contents first, and then like I'm not sweating on stream for 10 hours a day. Um, when I only play M Call of Duty for like an hour or two, hopping on Search and Destroy and Hardpoint and Free For All, it's fun. You know, you hop on mm. for an hour or two, you get a couple games, you win some, you lose some, you roll out. And it's like, 
those people they also need to they they got to give them more content or they're not going to play the game anymore especially with this this game being all mw2 maps or, or yeah old school mw2 maps yeah. so like thinking of this this getting what four new maps how many are we getting six 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 yeah so six so you got to think of it's six new maps but they didn't have to make any new maps so there should be they we should end up getting by like 12 right original ones by the end maybe i don't know i just to, to summarize I, I will say like as, as a as a zombies like perspective but not even really that like i i enjoy multiplayer as well but like you know i'm not sweating on stream 10 hours a day playing it either but i, I i've liked what they've done with the maps where it's like they're in a similar like location to the original mw2 maps yeah. but they're like a different thing like yeah. i don't know that's fun yeah i like what they've done with those that's really cool and that's not completely straying away from like what they did with the maps on launch and i i actually think with multiplayer again i can't i can't praise them enough sledgehammer's done a great job but it just feels like so painful as a zombies fan where it's like like i understand treyarch has been pulled off to go work on cod 2024 but it just feels like oh my god you know like we're they're just phoning it in because they have to yeah put something out but such yeah. a waste of a good launch to me I, I yeah i think i think going to the maps again i i saw um the layout of all of them and the one has a very similar vibe to bo2 raid that's kind of the rumor going around and just like you said they have a really good look i think vanguard's maps were very dull mw2 maps were actually not terrible it was just the game itself that was just mm -hmm. really holding those maps back because i think them being added into Modern Warfare 3, I don't know if you've played multiplayer in the last couple months. Oh, yeah, yeah, or, so, yeah, playing like the hotel like map. Like Farm 18 Farm or something. 18, it's like, oh my God, it feels so much better on this game. It feels you know? so much better. So I do like the fact that the maps are, are, are they're feeling good. There's some variety. Again, it just goes back to if MW2 never happened and this was MW, like this was MW2, Oh my gosh, yeah. the, the whole thing would be a, a change of perspective for people. This, this would probably be, I feel like this would be like people's favorite CODs of all time. That could, might be could wild to say. Certainly be. It could certainly be. And, and especially if Zombies was getting the yeah, same yeah, um, yeah. energy and, and love that, that multiplayer was getting. Yeah, they'd be in a good spot for sure. And campaign. Um, <laughs> man, yeah, it's like, that's so, it's so heartbreaking. Now, and I see like, I feel like when a roadmap comes out, like as somebody, and this is more your wheelhouse, so I'm interested in your perspective, but yeah. my my eyes kind of glaze over the Warzone part because like what you said was like you, you, you didn't even really like register the I, zombies portion of it. Not at all. Not at all. Exactly. I feel like my brain does it with like the Warzone stuff. So as like a Warzone enjoyer, what is your perspective on on because oh, when a roadmap comes out yeah. what i'm getting at is yeah it feels like 90 percent of the block or, is, or the page is warzone stuff. it is it is now and i think but i think that's also going back to the point of you made with the multiplayer getting a little more love i, I do feel like warzone's kind of hit this spot where we don't know what to do with it next like it, it doesn't it, it, it's feeling a little stale even from my perspective i i used to stream rebirth every day for three and a half years so um when I saw the rebirth news I was like okay like that's great um I think it'll bring a ton of the casuals back I think for me all my buddies this is what we did we hopped on cod we played rebirth cuz it had that balance of multiplayer with that feeling of the intensity of battle royale that's why I've always loved resurgence mode because it felt like a mix the the big br mode for me i think they're going away from it I, as you can tell like yeah ranked play is not a thing anymore for for the big map it's content it was fortunes keep and now it's continuing to rebirth um so i think they're kind of fading on the big map i think there's obviously big map enjoyers but they got to have stats somewhere saying people love resurgence we have a sheikah island we have fortunes keep we have vondel we now have rebirth so it's like I always said way back, give us six resurgence maps and have them rotate like it's multiplayer. And you can choose a map for that game. I don't, I'm sure physics, that would dilute physics, the player base a little bit. physics yeah. wise, it's probably not going to work. But sure. I did like about Apex where it's like a rotation. Every 20 minutes, you get a new map. Now it's different because Ashika Island, that thing's got to get an update. That thing 
that's the why would I want to look at the most depressing map in history of the gaming scene while I play a game? I don't think the map's terrible. I just think the map if you put a bright blue sky and like the flowers were blooming and you know it was like that like splash color from Black Ops 3 DLC. You know, just like the 6v6 map, the middle one um in Dubai. I give me those maps on everything. Mm-hmm. So anyway, to to summarize, I think with this rebirth, I think you're going to see, I think it's good for the game because I think casuals are going to return. Even if the game doesn't feel the same, play the same, the name Rebirth Island holds weight to have people. Was Rebirth originally from Blackout? Yeah. So the, was it called Rebirth in, in Blackout? I don't know. It was um Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Al- Alcatraz yeah. And it, it worked very similar. It had the, it had a. It had a timer, but it was a little bit, it, it wasn't too different, but it was a little bit different. But uh, I remember playing it a lot in Blackout. I don't think I really played it that much in actual like Warzone, but I, I hear Rebirth yeah. is like, like Rebirth thing. from my perspective ended up being like its own, its own like version of Warzone itself. Like there was a, a audience specifically for Rebirth that, that like they weren't as interested in like the other parts of Warzone 100%. as much as, you know, and I, I just thought that was very interesting. I love that you said that too, because I wanted to bring this up. Uh, what are your thoughts on Warzone? I know this was talked about at Zombies at one point. What if they took Warzone and made it like own launcher, own game, own updates, own studio, and then COD is campaign, multiplayer, zombies, infected? Because I feel like that's the problem is you got Sledgehammer trying to do 70 different things. I know there's Raven Software and all these other studios are involved, but yeah. it's like they're the ones tweeting the 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 roadmap here. It's not sure. it's not, you know, the other people. So, I don't know. I just for me, so what do you think on that? It seems like I I kind of I think what you're getting at is it feels like Warzone has gotten too big for itself. Where it's like, like Warzone's like, COD. Warzone yeah. is COD. Where Yeah, yeah, it, it's like it's now demanding its own identity and like war maybe maybe warzone needs to be its own like separate entity to like call of duty yeah. like if they i don't yeah it's an interesting thought where it's like if they were to repurpose call of duty as like you know the traditional format of like a really like full campaign experience a very you know like robust multiplayer and like a solid third mode zombies or whatever and then yeah. like I feel like that's what they're kind of trying to do, but they haven't made that clean break yet where like Warzone is just doing its own thing. Um, And because that is, I think the other problem too, is like a Call of Duty game conceptually, like let's say this next Gulf War or whatever, the, you already know that the Warzone theme around that is going to have like guns from that game. It's going to have like theme and themes and equipment and so on. But like, if they could actually make that clean break, we could have Warzone doing whatever it wants to do. Yes. And we could have Call of Duty also doing whatever it wants yep. to do. And then yep. that would, I think, foster some more like variety between the two experiences. It would feel like a um, new title too. So you're like, oh, I'm going to go play some Warzone and then I'm going to play Call of Duty. They're different games. Like now it just yeah, feels yeah. like this big, and I know that's kind of what their goal was, like just make it this big experience. That's why the launcher is the way it is and the menu is the way it is. Um, it's gotten too big for itself. It's gotten though. too big. It's got, there's too much going on. I think in my opinion, it's just too yeah. much. Um, they, they, they have this weird hyper fixation with like, we want people to enjoy um, every experience equally, but like people don't really play like that. Well, just, um, just like you said, you don't even look at the war zone map. I don't look at the it, zombies map. It's a different. Yeah. I just think they're different things. And I just, yeah. Oh, that's a great line. Somebody, somebody, it's, somebody, that might be the beginning line for the podcast. <laughs> that might be yeah, the beginning but it, but line. It's, but uh, it's true. It's like they, they're, they're doing, like you said, I, people, people have the thing that they're into, which is like, you know, zombies or NPR war zone. And then when, when the, the roadmap comes out, they kind of block out all the stuff that isn't relevant to yep, them. So yep. then the roadmap only looks this big Yeah. where it's like, if war zone could have a clean break, war zone fans get a whole roadmap of whatever they're getting. And then call of duty fans let's say would get a f- more full roadmap of stuff that yeah. is like more relevant to them yeah i and mean it, it makes perfect sense i just don't think people people i don't think people play every mode in call of duty equally like like the devs or or whoever say they do like 
you, they're, they're like, you'll hear interviews where they're like, we want people to jump onto Warzone for an hour and then head over to multiplayer and then go play zombies. But it's like, people, don't people do that. just don't really play like that, I no. don't think. I mean, maybe maybe we're in our own like gaming build bubble, but like, I don't think so. I don't I, think the casual gamer does that. I, I I remember vividly with Cold War, that game was legitimately a rank up simulator for Warzone. I don't care what anybody says. That game, I hopped on, I ranked up my guns, I r immediately went back to Warzone. Like I did Man, not. I I wish I I hate that I did that. I I wish I would have played that game more because everybody always talks about Cold War, super underrated. And I think it was when you go back and revisit it. It was like six months later it was underrated, not in the beginning. Sure. Don't get that twisted. Uh so but yeah, I just think like even Vanguard was the same way. Like they It's funny you say that. I actually like someone at my gym that I knew in like real life was like telling me that he was using that he was only playing Cold War so that he could rank up guns for yes. Warzone. Yeah. Like cause I was talking to him about zombies because like that's what I play. And he's like, Yeah, I play zombies sometimes, but I just do it to level up guns for Warzone. But Camos. Like, then you you just missed out on appreciating the whole game. Like yes. you know. And that's why um, I think Warzone, you know, how great would it be if Warzone got different guns and like, I know we're, we'll talk about the new weapons that are coming, but you know, what, what if it was just like a set of kind of like COD Mobile, you know, like COD Mobile had guns from all the CODs and then you make that, I don't need to play with the MP40 on every Call of Duty multiplayer, but sure. like Warzone, maybe it'd be cool to play as the MP40 and the PDW and the you know, the ASM one and like th that becomes like the COD mobile where they just have everything sprinkled in it to make it its own little thing. Um, yeah. And then, like we said, we, we keep the game COD the game um, and you know what you're getting with Call of Duty, a good campaign, good multiplayer experience and a zombies experience that is uh, playable, <laughs> playable. If not, if not good, we would hope. But just yeah, playable. I agree, man. It's like I, I do think that. Eventually, there needs to be a clean break because the the problem is now, and I think that's what's affecting you know people that enjoy maybe these other modes is like Warzone is now encroaching on zombies territory. Yeah, like and like you know, I mean, God, like the 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 map in MWZ is the Warzone map. I understand that it's a project that maybe wasn't supposed to even be out, but like I get that it wasn't like I understand the whole thing with MWZ and like yeah, its yeah, development, yeah, yeah. but yeah. still, it's just like. That that it feels like the design choices in Warzone are encroaching into other parts, and I think like people say all the time. I'm sure you see this in like your comment section. People go, "Warzone ruined Call of Duty." Like that's like you know that. But I think what people are getting at when when they say is like Warzone's gotten too big for itself, where it's now encroaching into these yes. other experiences. Yeah, um, I, I don't. And so it ne it needs a clean break. I don't think it ruined. I actually have a video titled Warzone. Did Warzone ruin Call of Duty? And I go over the positive and negatives of that. Sure. Um, so I think you can make a case for either. But like you keep saying, it needs to break off. And I think it was encroaching in the multiplayer the last couple of years. And now I feel like multiplayer is kind of like breaking out of it a little bit. But yeah. now zombies takes the hit. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like. And campaign some, took the some, hit. And campaign took mm -hmm. the hit. So it's Something like the, always like pays for it, whether hit. it be yep. campaign or zombies or yeah, exactly. So I just because I want I want both to succeed in their own way. Yeah. And I think if Warzone could detach, maybe they could they could go off and be a lot more successful. And maybe Call of Duty could like I think the problem the thing that Call of Duty needs to do, in my opinion, is reestablish its identity. Like, you know, I I would imagine a lot of people would agree that Call of Duty's really struggled with its identity in the last couple of years yeah. of like, what is it exactly? And they could maybe start to like reel it back in a little bit if they didn't have to make design choices that also like cater to Warzone. Yeah. Um, and, and what do you think about, so <laughs> identity wise, I was literally going to say the biggest thing for identity is always the argument of skins running around. You got Nicki Minaj, you got uh, the boys, you got a bunny. And now you got Cheech and Chong in this season. Like, do you think that's really the issue? Or is that just something that people go, oh, look at Red who's in the like COD that. game? Because I'll tell you what, Advanced Warfare is one of, my, one of my favorite CODs. Black Ops 3 is one of my favorite CODs. World War II is an underrated COD. Those games have some wild skins. And yeah. you don't remember those. I mean, I remember what? a tentacle guy in Advanced Warfare. I'm running around with a tentacle guy. And a clown face, and there was no issues. Black Ops Three, the same thing. Like I'm dabbing in the end game circle mm -hmm. with a, <laughs> a a rainbow ruin skin, and I'm like, 
I don't know what's going yeah. on, but I'm having fun on the game. <laughs> yeah, and there's no and there's nothing wrong with that. And and to to answer your question, no, I don't think it's the skins that like are the thing that are taking away its identity. I think what's going on because, like you said, AWBO3, they had these like wild cosmetics, but they but you still like that didn't detract from their identity. I think what's going on is that the real problem I think is every call of duty title now has every developer working on it where before it's like this is yeah. clearly a sledgehammer game yeah yeah bo3 is like this is a treyarch game like every game had its own art style its own feel um like color palette direction mechanics and so on but like every game by switching to like the modern warfare engine every game has felt more or less the same and also the Especially fact that like one. menus yeah, yeah, and like uh, the menus, the launcher of every game now feels the same. The like the UI, do, you know what I mean? Like the menus and UI aren't different anymore. So that's what's contributing to the lack of like identity. I think it's more, it's way deeper than just like silly cosmetics. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's just the fact that I think every studio is now participating in making Call of Duty that like they don't have their own individual feels anymore. Like I, I, I don't think Treyarch is gonna. We'll see. But if Gulf War is being developed on the Modern Warfare engine, I don't know what I'm they're going to do that. I'm to make it that. feel like yeah. a Treyarch game. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm scared about like, that. Treyarch has a very specific like feel to their games. And anybody who's played Black Ops 1, 2, 3, like, you know. Um, but if it feels like MW3, then, you know, is it really going to be a Treyarch game? And that that, I think... They need to reel it back a little bit, clean break from Warzone, and focus on more like individual studio identities again. Yes, and because that's how those games got cult followings. You you remember being like a, a an OG COD fan? You remember the IW versus Treyarch? Yeah, fan you're a, you're a Black Ops guy or you're a, a Modern Warfare guy? Exactly. 100%. And I'm, I'm a Black really Ops have, guy. Sue me. Yeah, we we don't really have that anymore. You no, know? we don't. It's like, and yeah, I think that in some ways that's kind of a shame. Like the the upside that everybody's working on it you would think is that more content would be able to be developed and maybe that's true sometimes but um i don't think that's true in every case and the downside is that every game loses its identity yes i i think especially we talked about this about uh, maybe a week or two ago with this game it just feels like the like i said the menu and all that stuff the same but the create a class the the ui within the game the mini map the the score it's all the same. So I feel like I've been playing MW2 2.4 uh, for 18 months. You know, it's, mm -hmm. and, and you know, with COD, the cycle's five months. And it's like, now we've been playing the same game for 18 months, regardless of the movement change and the, and the red dots and the dead silence. Like, the core feel of the game still feels the same. So I yeah. don't feel like, oh, wow, MW3 is this brand new game and you can feel it. Um, yeah. So even with these new maps coming in and Rebirth coming in, it still feels like MW 2.4. That's why I'm excited for the Treyarch title because I'm hoping maybe, just maybe, they can like break out of this Modern Warfare feel. I don't know, though, because I'm worried. Because like, if you go to the Warzone side of things with Modern Warfare 19 and Cold War, it just kind of changed the color. <laughs> like It was blue like for modern warfare and then like once cold war came in the creative class on warzone was like a mm. a brownish red and it was like okay nothing well, really changed when you when you said that i just had an idea where it's like i just think that if if they were to actually do it in like clean break from warzone like i think in a lot of ways you could have your cake and eat it too where like you could have the the modern warfare engine and people that like that experience on warzone but that would mean that like the actual Call of Duty games could maintain their their feel of like, oh, this is a Treyarch game. We don't have yeah. to use the Modern Warfare engine. Like you, you could have it both ways. Um, if you if you did it that way, maybe it would be more difficult to develop. Um, that way, but I don't know. I think instead of I think making, they got the oh, resources, every game from here on out, we'll don't be on, they? Wait, what did you say? I think they got the resources, don't they? <laughs> I mean, man, I mean, you would are think the money a billion dollar company? By the way, like you know, yeah, I mean. But I, I just think that's the easiest way to, like, have it both ways. You can have your Warzone, like, Modern Warfare engine. and But that means that Call of Duty, the 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 game, like, the premium Call of Duty game, can feel uh, 
the ability to be on its own like engine creatively of what fits for that game yeah like yeah i just i think that works in my opinion i i agree 100 percent. and i want to pivot i want to not pivot too far but i want to stay on this i want to what jumped out beside let's let's go down or let's get rid of the titles what on the roadmap did anything jump out at you that is not the new maps the rebirth obviously your modern wars and we're not even going to talk about that um we're just going to move on um i have a couple things but i, I want to see if if we're l looking at the same things type of vibe yeah uh i mean i did notice i noticed the new perks um and i thought that was pretty cool um what they have the mw2 like perk logos on them too but yeah, also uh, i thought that was interesting but um I, I mean the the new weapons are what made my like ears perk up a yeah, little yeah, bit. yeah yeah uh big aw weapons <laughs> i did you like aw i didn't even ask you i feel like you didn't i i i, I liked it a lot i i think oh, the campaign okay. was like okay. above average i I think the multiplayer was very good mm. and zombies was uh, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't, um, that was without the jetpacks in the beginning, right? And then you got them as the level you went like on. pick up the exosuits. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Zombies was, was it was all right. I mean, it was creative. It wasn't like that's and that's what I don't think Sledgehammer but... gets the, the love for is a, like they're trying something new, you know, like, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it was creative for sure. It didn't it, I don't think it worked the best, but it was it was creative and it was memorable at least. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I liked AW well enough. Um, so I am with you on the weapons. I think the gladiator knife looks like the Sith, uh, axe thing from rise of Skywalker. Just a mm -hmm. side note, mm -hmm. side plug of the star Wars <laughs> channel. Once again, I have two things that I want to mention. The gun, the guns obviously for me are a, a big one, but yeah. capture the flag. One in the chamber are returning. I have, I have, I have things to say about that. By uh, all means. First thing first, why on earth are they not in the game at launch? I don't understand why we're removing these things and then adding them back like they're new content when they're not new content. I, I, Amen. I just don't understand the logic of that. One in the chamber should be at launch all the time, anytime, not, hey, guys, we're going to put it in the game for a week. We're going to take it out of there, and then we're going to put it on a new season. I just will never understand that. And the positive I will say from this is capture the flag. As you all know, as you might not know, actually, I'm a creator for Boston Breach and they're a professional Call of Duty team. There is a game mode called Control that these pros play. Anytime they play this mode, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I watch that mode and I want to fall asleep. Search and destroy, fantastic. <laughs> Hardpoint, fantastic. Control, I don't know who made the game mode. I think it was Treyarch back in COD Black Ops 4 or Cold War. One of the two. I think it was Black. It I might think be BO4. BO4, yeah, BO4. yeah, yeah. And I think it was different on BO4. You had five people. You had you had things flying all over the place. It was more, it was more like hero based. Specialist. Yeah, yeah, way different. Um, So I'm hoping that I see that mode replace Control Maybe not this year, but maybe. You never know. It could happen, but uh, I would love to see that get replaced. I don't think it'll be this year, but maybe next year with Black Ops, we could go to capture the flag as that third game mode because I would love that because I'm a big Halo guy too, and that's a big staple of competitive yeah, Halo as well. Halo so yeah. um, I'll, I'll get your opinions, and I got one more thing to add on the roadmap. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, as far as, like, modes, I'm I'm interested, like, yeah, Capture the Flag is, like... I won't personally the play it. Be there. I won't play yeah. it, but I do like that it's there. It should just be there, but Minefield and Escort, like, Escort sounds like um what is already in MWZ, like, it's already in Zombies, it's probably something pretty similar, Um, but Minefield, I have no idea what that is, but it sounds fun, like, maybe it's, like, just like a fun, I don't know if it's, like, a party mode or whatever, but, cool. I mean, it yeah. sounds like it could be cool. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it sounds interesting. I um, didn't even think about that. I wasn't even looking. Or, again, I did, my eyes don't even go over there. My eyes go to, wow, I know these two modes, and they're back again for the <laughs> fifth time after yeah, being and then, removed. Yeah, and then Minefield and Escort are in season, of yeah, course. But like, yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, looks interesting enough. Um, But, yeah, I, I, I think they should be, those should be present from the start, and then maybe at that point they could try to, like, do new modes on top of the these things that have already been staples in call of duty like forever um yeah i'm 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 interested in the new weapons obviously this feels like a homage to 
sledgehammer's roots with like aw and everything and i think that's fun um i just i just wish that sledgehammer had the uh they they had like the freedom to just was, do yep. whatever the hell they want creatively yep, yep. it feels like they're they're always trying like they're trying to get there then they get like pulled back in a yep, little bit but i agree if they had the capability to do whatever they want i'm sure they would do fantastic work because i think they've actually done an amazing job on multiplayer this year um i know Great they're not actually directly working on zombies but like zombies if it were just as like I don't know, full as the MP experience, like this game would be in great shape. Yes. Um, and they, yeah, cause they have something special that way. Um, I have one thing and then we're going to switch to the next topic of discussion. <clears throat> and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad, I think it's a bad thing because I think this is going to lead to something that I do not like in video games. Um, I don't know if you're looking at the map, ladies and gentlemen, but there's a new smart display. And I don't know if you know what I'm going to say here, but have you ever played 2K24, 23? Um, if you're a basketball fan, there's also there's always a score table on the side of like that midcourt, like where the announcers sit. And what they do with this scoreboard now is it's literally an advertisement for stuff. No. Buy VC, uh, Mountain Dew, uh, whatever. Pre-order the next game. And I think... They're going to start off, this is my guess, this is completely out of left field. Oh uh, there's no evidence, there's no nothing. But right now it's like the temperature in Vondell, the map layout, like it's like a, you're at a mall. I guarantee you, give it three months, you're going to start seeing, here's the new skins, <laughs> here's the new buy some COD points, pre-order Black Ops Golf War, which I don't know if that's a bad thing, really. It just feels like it's going to be another one of those things where, you know, you hop on the game now, and as soon as you boot up the main menu, it's 75 ads it's in your right face. right in your you're face, like, yeah, like, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, buy this skin. You're like, I just got on the game. Like, let me think for a second. So right. I think Man, you're going to start but, seeing that in-game. I really do. Oh, my do. God. I could talk about this forever. I <laughs> This was the thing I was going to bring up before that I was telling you about. That's so interesting. See, I wouldn't have actually noticed that. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, the I, I bet you they're going to do a thing where it's going to become like a big glorified advertisement board, but that that can work, but they need to do it differently. And what I mean is like, I remember, I don't know if you, I'm sure you may remember this, but before BO3 came out, there were um, You're these like to... Snapchat teasers mm -hmm. in BO2 that you would like in, in the map express, you would yes. scan this like code yep. and then it would be, it would be okay. I mean, it's like, it was part of the ARG is like essentially an advertisement, but it was fun. It was so cool. Yes. But I, I guarantee you they're just going to go the, like, the cheap way yes. and just slap on pre-order Black Ops Go for now and get yes. the, you know, that, on this display. That Easter egg, if you have not seen that Easter egg, please go back on YouTube and watch. I remember Drifter obviously probably got told the information that it was, you know, in the game. And then he got to, like, advertise it on his YouTube channel first. Him and T. Martin back in the day. Shout out both of those guys. Um and then it led to you to like a a teaser for Black Ops Three that was like um it would the take woods. You to the Doctor Salim Snapchat. Yeah, wasn't it the woods? Like it had like that that like that cut scene from the campaign, the woods. Uh, black yeah, you'd, and white. you'd be in the frozen forest. We'll, we'll have it up. We're gonna we're gonna this podcast will be added a little bit more, so we're gonna have some yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, pop it would up. put you in the frozen forest. It'd have like the crows. It'd have Doctor yes. Salim like telling you uh, things, but it's like it didn't give you too much. And it was like, oh, that's interesting. I guarantee you, these damn TVs are just gonna be pre-order call of duty black yes. ops go for it yeah yes. and oh, so damn. that was actually a fantastic tie-in so yeah just think about that you know it's something to think about but as we said black ops 2 is uh hyping up you know the, it led to black ops 3 it teased it now we need to talk about black ops 3 because you would you would think in yourself what in the world are we talking about black ops 3 for in 2024 when that game came out in 2015 well there is i guess this is good news Black Ops 3 on the Xbox top sales charts was in the top 10 uh, in either March or February, one of those two months. And I guess my thought to you is, or what my question is, what's your reaction to that? What in the world? Why do you think that happened? What ha Like, I have, like, it actually shocked me a little bit when I was, yeah. when it was there. I'm like, I mean, I know there's a, there's a PC community heavy for it. 
but not a console. So I'm like, yeah, why are people buying that I game again? Surprised for two. Well, there's a couple things going on, and this is like a whole discussion. Um, I, I I'm not really surprised because it's not the first time it's happened. I like even like last year, I believe like Bo3 cracked the like top ten or something. But um, it's one of the most like evergreen Call of Duty games. So I'm not yeah. surprised to see it back up there. What I am genuinely surprised at is the fact that it's on like console or like it's getting that much. I didn't on understand that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like that game has had a little bit of issues with like it's been a bit more easy to be breached and like cheaters can get on it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but the, the main problem is that on PC, I think it will always thrive because of mod tools. Like there's just so much community driven content that can be made there, but that doesn't really translate over to Xbox. So I'm not really <laughs> sure why. It's doing so good over there. I don't know, but I think that I mean I think that's great. I mean Black Ops Three is like one of the best Call of Duties yeah. ever made. Um, it, it so is. so good. It yeah. deserves it. But if that had the community content over there, I think it would be doing even better. Um, the fact that it's only on PC is like a bit of a shame. It'd be great if console could, but like I understand why they don't. And that is the other thing. If they want to make a Call of Duty game that's gonna live that long. Like it needs to have that community driven content, the, yes. you know, like Halo Forge mode or the ability to make custom maps or something like that. Like that's that's why BO3 in large part, in my opinion, is still alive, not only because it's a really quality game, but um, the community driven content yep. is certainly keeping it have having that heartbeat, too. Well, but yeah, I think I think great. I don't have an explanation. I, I have this on our, you know, to talk about, but I really I mean, I, maybe it went on sale or or that. But. Sure. I just, I have no idea why it would be up there. I, I think it's such a, I, I think it's a great game. It's probably in my top three of games, which we will be doing a podcast sometime about rank. We're going to, we're going to rank our favorite CODs and we're going to be good. discuss them because I think our list might be pretty similar though, but that's okay. We can still, we can still do it. Um, they'll, they'll be different in meaningful ways. That I'm sure will be fun to talk yes. about. Yep. So I think, uh, yeah, there's. It was a short thing. I just wanted to bring it up because I, you know, I have zombie or not zombies. I have Black Ops Three on my PC, and through Steam, you can do a bunch of um, mods and all that stuff. And I think there's even transit that is coming back to Black Ops Two. Somebody fully remastered it and made it this like own thing for Black Ops Three. So like that game refuses to die over there. I've seen like Family Guy zombies. Um, I know there's a paintball game coming to Black Ops 3. I don't know if you've seen that. That's all, man, that's all I did during, like, the pandemic was, like, me, me and Noah and a couple other people, we would just play custom maps every day <laughs> on stream. I mean, I probably played, like, not not now because there's a lot more that's come out, but I, yeah. at that point, I probably played every custom map that existed, like, um, and that, that community-driven content, on top of it just being a fantastically built game, um, I think is a recipe for it to live on forever. And like, I don't have an explanation, but I'm not surprised that it's doing so well. Here's just sparked in my head. Maybe it is a zombies based reason. They see the update. They hear the update, the rumors that zombies is probably not even going to get touched again for the rest of the, you know, life cycle. I feel like that's kind of the rumor that's been going around. And many consider black ops three to be the best zombies, I would say. Yep. So maybe they go, hey, you know what? We'll just go back to play Black Ops 3 again and we'll just have we'll just do the round based zombies, the whole Easter egg thing, the gobble gum thing, and mm -hmm. rock it. I don't I mean that's I, I man, I think that's a big part of it. It's like people are craving for that like classic zombies yes. experience. Yep. And all things considered, BO3 does have the most to offer. Yeah. Um out of that. So yeah, I mean, I, I do actually think zombies is a big reason why people are going back. It's not for the campaign. Um, maybe it's partly for the multiplayer, but I do think it's in large part for the zombies mode. Um, but it's like just really cool to see, like for for me, that game yeah. uh, selling so well, like in 2024. Remaster, like, remaster anybody? Man, that that's what I mean. Like, dude, that game. It's almost 10 years old. Yeah, like so. We're, put we're it put it into perspective. Point. When so let me do some math here. It literally is probably the same. If I if no, it might be a little okay. Bear with me here. Black, uh, COD 4 comes out in 2007. It gets remastered in 2016. Yeah. Yes. Came with Infinite Warfare. Yeah, and that is, if I remember correctly, that's nine years, if that math adds up. 
nine years black ops we're three about ago. there with bo3 yeah listen i don't Which know it's crazy yeah. it's so i don't I mean, think we'll ever see jetpacks again but i i mean yeah it's like well the whole thing is like they're making a a, a bo2 sequel they're making black ops 3 2 in 2025 allegedly yes um so i don't know how play, much they're gonna did you ever play go blackout ahead. yeah yeah I, played, um, I actually, I, th I think I played more Blackout than I played Warzone. I don't know how doable this would be, but speaking of jetpacks, since we're on Black Ops 3, there was a mode, I believe it was called like Hardened Mode or something like that, with the jetpack. That had jetpacks. Yeah, man, and dude, a lot of things they were going to do with Blackout, bro. <laughs> like, I could tell you so much stuff about that. Like, We need to have a podcast origins... on Blackout. Oh my god, they wanted the Origins robots to be walking across the map on Blackout. How sick would that be? I, I'm these big tanking robots like walking bro that'd have been crazy i think we should literally do a pod but this is we're just talking at this time but like i think we literally need to do a podcast on blackout and what it could have like how it made warzone run you know like yeah. blackout walked so warzone could run and boy oh boy i love the early warzone but going back and looking at blackout Boy, we had something special if it would have had the amount of updates Warzone had, I think. I mm -hmm. really do think that. But, um, you know, that that's a, that's another topic for another day. But uh, we have one more thing we want to talk about. And we can keep this one short if we want to. I'm just going to ask you one simple question. Go for is, it, is X Defiant dead on release? <laughs> that, so I have recently re-caught up with the whole X Defiant situation. Because, like, I, I'd known... Um, that this was an FPS that was like, I, I, I actually played it like, man, I think I played it maybe over two years ago. I played it in like a really, really like early alpha. Okay. Um, a long, long time ago. And I remember their, their, like their whole thing was like, they're going to be ultra transparent with the community. No SBMM. Like, like they're trying to be like the anti cod. Yeah. And yeah. It seemed for a while <clears throat> they had that and the community was on their side in that way. But recently with the, I guess, the announcement that their game is not coming out anytime soon, people have completely turned the, the, the goodwill of that community transparency like on its head. Like X Defiant has become like the villain almost overnight. It's um, so sad. It's that's so the, sad. Like, dude, that's like what you live and die by if you're so uh, open with your community is like, it's great when things are going well, but it can turn on a head like that. And um, to see like Mark Rubin going on Twitter and like vehemently defending like yeah. the situation, I'm just like, <laughs> what is going on, bro? Like it's I, crazy. I I so to answer my own question, I don't think it's dead on release. I think at the end of the day, it is a free to play game, and I think that is what it can always make it live. You know, if they do community up or a community, like they keep up with the community, they do a bunch of updates, um, there's content and the game's fun. I don't think that I, what I've always seen from Aches, who is like one of the lead designers or something in there. I don't know what he does in the, the studio. He's a former COD pro. Um, he always talks about like their goal was not to replace COD. It's to be there long term. Like they don't want They didn't want to just put the game out while MW2 was bad, and then once MW3 came out, you just stopped playing X Defiant, and, and then... they get a bunch of, like, disenfranchised yeah. COD players, and then yeah. they just go back to the next year, yeah. So, it, I just think, I, I agree with him saying that. When they release it, it needs to hit, and, you know, maybe now, at this point, they're just waiting for that break between, you know, the CODs, because this, this game will get stale for people, even with Rebirth coming out. People will play Rebirth, and they'll go, wow, it doesn't feel the same as it did during um the pandemic and then they'll stop playing and they'll go to other games and again this is a free to play game so i think there's hope for it i think they at this point i think you have to wait until like a summer i think you have to wait till may or june um and then put it out then when there's like the, the stale time in cod kids are off um summer's you know happening you got a bunch of time to game throw it in there and and just see how it does. I mean, uh, I hope it sticks around because there's why would you not? Why would you want a game to fail? I hate that logic. Why would you? Yeah, yeah. I always hated yeah. that with NBA 2K and NBA Live. They're like, I hate NBA Live. I, it sucks. OK, so now 2K is taking over the market and now we get the same game every year. Thanks, guys. That was your fault. So if X Defiant, I mean, you already see what X Defiant did on the realm of COD. It made them 
I think it scared them a little bit where they're like, oh, uh, but, you know, bring back red dots, bring back you know, sliding, bring and scramble a little bit. To yeah, like get the yeah. Back on their yep. side. Yeah. So keep the competition. You know, we want to yeah, support them, great. you know, yeah, exactly. so. I, I, I don't know if you saw my tweet I, um, just to wrap up this like segment, but I had I tweeted. So I, I was looking back through a few of my old videos and I made a video like over eight years ago and it's called why Black Ops 3 will be good and why Destiny is bad. And I was like, this is the <laughs> best aged video I've ever made in my life. I, I and the thing I was tweeted. getting at. Yeah. And the thing I, and I watched and I was listening to what I had said. And, I, and in, in that video, I'd mentioned that BO3 uh, was releasing very close to Star Wars Battlefront 2015. And EA and Activision were like, that was like the main competition. They were very much like competitors and still are, but like, you know, very much so in that era. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, the best thing for both of these games is that they are competition to each other. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. The fact that they, like Destiny launched uncontested, so they didn't feel the need to like go hard. Yeah. And, and, and BO3 had to really like bring it. So did Battlefront to yeah. really, you know, and I think if, Call of Duty feels like it really has to bring it, and X Defiant feels like it really has to bring it. Hey, we all we win. both win. We, we all win. win. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So no, I think that's exactly a good point. I think that's a perfect point, and I I never want to see a comp a competitor fail because I mean even in the content space, I mean uh, of sure. course when I see people that I think are better than me. My first reaction sometimes selfishly is like, oh my gosh, like here we go again. Now I got to try to get better. But then once you start trying to up your quality and focus and do all this, I mean, this is the reason the podcast came out. You know, I'm seeing people, you know, uh, in this COD scene do podcasts. I'm like, well, nobody's really filling the gap of, of casual. And it just made me think about it. And I love doing this and. I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah. other people push you. It's a good thing when it, it, it kind of hurts at the time. You're like, ah, oh, crap. Like I got to try to get better, but yeah, but you can use that as like strength. Yes. If you really want to. Yep. Um, I don't think, I think that's it. We're, we're, we're clocking in right now at 51 minutes. We talked <laughs> before the podcast, we get, we said, we're going to go 30 minutes and we're going to get out of here. We spent 35 minutes on the roadmap. So just mm -hmm. so you know, but I, I, I mean, listen, I think this was, I love this. Uh, like I said, me and chopper here, we talked about cod on the phone a bunch and we were just like, you know what? Let's, let's throw this thing out there. If you made it this long, we're just going to, I want to just rant just a little I bit. At the end. You. Yeah, yeah. I just want to just be like how it kind of came together. And like, yeah, we both love cod. We both want to see it succeed. And we all, we love podcasts. We love talking. I give my opinions in my shorts and my long forms, but I feel like sometimes I, I don't talk unedited, like where I'm yeah, just spitting and then I have somebody else to bounce off of. So I think this is what you're going to see with this podcast. I don't know how many guests we'll bring on. Maybe we'll see how that works down the line, but um, right now I'd love to always experiment. And like, yeah, for me, it's a good outlet. Cause like for me, I, I mostly talk about my opinions in like really, really long form things, but I don't get this kind of opportunity very much to just speak like, off off my mind and uh yes. and have a co-host to bounce it off of too so i think we have something uh really good going here and yeah. i hope other people are enjoying it i even just appreciate all of you guys for tuning in and watching as well it means a lot to all of yeah. us yeah let, let us know in the comments uh if we can improve at all if you want to see us do anything i do want to introduce some sort of game that we start in the beginning of the podcast like either a trivia thing where we each ask some each you know we bring something you're like you ask me a question, I ask you a question, like before the thing starts to see if we, you know, test our COD yeah. knowledge. Um, and then we're going to do tier lists. We'll do, you know, obviously news coming out. Um, but yeah, I think that's really like the the, the core of what we wanted to do. We'll, we'll probably go back, like we talked about with Blackout. I want to go back and revisit titles, you know, a retrospective kind of like you do with your content, mm -hmm. but just talking it in a podcast format. Um so yeah, I mean yeah. we're just yeah. Kinda... There's a lot. There's a lot of fun stuff I think we can do. So um, much. To there's do. a lot of potential here, and yeah, I'm really excited. Um, we're working on a logo. The logo I'm pointing at it. It's on top of his head. Uh, going dark. This is episode one. Uh, there will be more. We're gonna get a logo made. The whole thing. This layout will probably be. I don't know. The layout doesn't look awful. Actually, it's pretty clean. I I, I like this vibe. To be honest, this yeah. is kind of my thing. Like, I like it too. I, it. I like it too. So this it might not change. We'll just get a little logo, but um. We're probably going to keep it on YouTube for now. We'll, we'll see how things go. Maybe Spotify and Apple down the road, but we want to kind of keep it centered on YouTube in the beginning. And um, I think that is it. I believe that 
wraps up episode one of Going Dark with Chopper and T-Dog. Um, anything sure. else you got to say? If you can, leave a like, comment. I know yeah. I always got to plug that. I, I always forget to do that. But I feel like if they no, do it, sure. they're going to do it naturally. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. But we do appreciate your guys' feedback in any form whatsoever. It, it, yeah. it helps us d deliver something better for you guys. And yeah, it's been a really exciting thing for me to do. I really appreciate the opportunity that that we all have for this. And like, yeah, I hope you guys keep coming back and tuning in because we got some fun stuff coming your way. Yeah, baby. Um, All right, y'all. That is Going Dark Episode 1. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, chat.